Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. I'm going to try and do this as simple as possible. I'm going to try not to rant as well. I know some videos I can be like, rah, 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 as I'm ranting um, over the course of the video. I'm going to try and take it slow and also uh, give you the news. So we're going to work backwards and then we're going to get to where we currently are. And I firmly believe uh, that a lot of people right now are definitely sleeping, uh, not paying attention, because this news is public. This news, like, you don't have to really dig that far to find it. And the fact that we keep getting this news, I want to say daily at this point, it's like every other daily, is quite significant. And I think because we're not seeing what people think that we should be seeing, I know it's all very cryptic, it's going to make a lot of sense in a couple of seconds. Uh, this is why I think that we have kind of like a, a a lull moment within the market. So backwards, a number of years ago, we had a company, MicroStrategy, who still exists, uh, who announced a number of years ago that they were going to start buying Bitcoin. And everyone was like, wee, because it was like a, a major company announced that they're going to be getting into the space. They're going to be buying Bitcoin. The expectation around that time was like maybe 10 Bitcoin, maybe 55, maybe 200. And they began to announce things like, hey, we just bought 4,500 Bitcoin. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, that's a that's a pretty big number. That ballooned into like 15,000, 65,000, 80 something thousand. And then, then, they, then they got over 100,000 Bitcoin. And that, that took them... I think it took them a couple of years and everyone, you know, it was it was a huge, huge moment. Like it's not not to be understated at all. It's just more of a uh, it took them a while to do so. And they did it in very unconventional means, at least unconventional to someone who's not a multi-billionaire. They begin to take out like excessive levels of debt. So the most famous one that kind of began it all was when they took out half a billion U.S. dollars worth of debt to tell other companies that they could get them in debt to be able to buy Bitcoin with the debt that they had been issued. And then at some point, without selling their Bitcoin, they actually managed to pay the companies back, I think, like nine years early or something spectacular. And every single time this happened, the price of Bitcoin would go up. Every single time. So we would get news from Michael Saylor, the CEO of Michael, Stra <laughs> Michael Strategy, Micro Strategy, that they had just bought more Bitcoin. We bought 8,000 Bitcoin yesterday. Bitcoin's price will go up by like 6%. Everyone's like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. A company just bought a huge amount of Bitcoin. This is what's supposed to happen to the price. Even though, and this is a very important thing to remember, a lot of times, I don't think they were actually buying spot like i don't think that they were actually buying from a crypto exchange they were simply purchasing from somewhere we heard and saw through a us sec filing that the purchase had taken place and then we knew it in the news as michael saylor said it on the stage somewhere and the price would go up after we heard the news of the actual purchase everyone with me probably not that then leads us to the information that we had recently, or not a word, where we heard that MicroStrategy had around I think like 183,000 Bitcoin. I think that was like literally the exact number. They had purchased more Bitcoin. Everyone was like, cool, MicroStrategy just bought a whole bunch of Bitcoin. I can't believe it. And the price went up a little bit as well. Now, dragging us to the current present, I'm not sure why this is present. We've heard... Over the at the time of me making this video, it has been less less than one month. We've been hearing about the accumulation patterns of the ETF issuers. And it's been unlike anything that we've had within the space. News like this years ago would have lit the market aflame instantaneously. There would have been no questioning. There would have been no, oh, wow, that's cool. We'd be in a whole different stratosphere at this point with the numbers that they're actually currently throwing out there. We've gone up before on the news that a company bought 4,000 Bitcoin, 
10,000 Bitcoin, 15,000 Bitcoin. We had news, I think a week after the ETFs got issued, that I think the ETF issuers had accumulated around, I think it was 25 or 27,000 Bitcoin. This, of course, was directly on the heels of the prices going down because of good old Grayscale. If you missed it, super long story short, Grayscale is another company who had a Bitcoin trust, has a Bitcoin trust, and then they got a Bitcoin ETF and people began to sell shares in the trust to buy the ETF. The problem was is that the trust actually held a huge amount of Bitcoin. So as people were rapidly selling off here, they were buying over here. But for some reason, this had a gigantic negative effect on the price of the cryptocurrency market and everyone completely kept on losing their minds as if it was the end all when we knew exactly who was selling. Grayscale was also selling directly to Coinbase, which also doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I wonder... Personally, what the internal conversations were there, someone was like, hey, should we sell this spot to someone else so that it doesn't affect the market? Nah, it's okay. Just sell directly to Coinbase so we can crash the market by about 15% over the course of a two-week period. I'm sure, that, I'm sure there may be more details in that conversation. But the point being, amidst all the news of Grayscale selling... We had a large amount of news of accumulation, which was near, like almost matching the same amount. So we kept on hearing that a lot of Bitcoin was being sold by Grayscale. We also had a lot of whale news outside of the actual ETF accumulation. So we heard many days. I didn't make videos, videos, videos about it because it was like, okay, cool. There's a lot of like other news that needs to be covered where... There were wallets, you might have remembered that video, there were um, specific wallets that this guy on Twitter, I don't remember his username, I'm so sorry, like, it's, it's, and I should know it because it's such like strong information, where he was basically finding wallets that had been activated, newly created Bitcoin wallets, and these wallets were buying like 150 Bitcoin per day, like every single day, and they were accumulating hundreds and thousands of Bitcoin over this time period, especially especially when prices end up dipping. And then on top of that, we started getting news that the ETF holders, creators, makers, I have to sneeze and it won't come out and it's driving me absolutely insane. Okay, it's gone. We, we were getting news about how much Bitcoin that they were also accumulating as well. These numbers began to really like, almost said rock my world. I'll say rock my world. Simply because any time we've heard before, remember, remember what I said, that MicroStrategy had accumulated 4,000, 8,000, 15,000 Bitcoin over the course of a four, five, six month period, prices would move up. People would be like, this is crazy. MicroStrategy has bought a whole bunch of Bitcoin. But on the news that we were getting that the ETF holders, makers, had accumulated 20,000 Bitcoin in seven days and not in four months, the price didn't really move. Of course, we had a grayscale selling pressure, but when grayscale selling pressure stopped about eight, nine days ago, it's believed that they're still selling, but like fragments of fragments now. So maybe like only 200 Bitcoin as opposed to several hundred and or thousand Bitcoin over the course of the exact same period. We got news that the ETF holders, this was like 10 days ago that they held around like 58,000 Bitcoin. And I was like, here we go. That's the number we needed because everyone's definitely paying attention. Price didn't, didn't really move. We heard that they had around like I think, 80, I think it was 84,000 Bitcoin. Keeping in mind, it's just these companies. Once again, I'm going to try not to rant. You remember, I, I did this in the last couple of videos. Uh, I, 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 I say things and I want other people to understand what I'm saying. I, I know you get English, but I feel like people really aren't understanding exactly what's taking place over the short period of time that we currently have in front of us. That 84,000 became 100,000 Bitcoin. Just, the, I think it's nine or 10 companies, um, somewhere around there, who have the 11 ETFs that were actually created or allowed to go through, I think the 11th or 12th of January. 100,000 Bitcoin, which was already more than half 
of what MicroStrategy had accumulated over the course of a four to five year period. Three weeks compared to five years. And I was like, okay, here we go. Oh, nothing, nothing is happening once again. The news that we have right now shocked me a lot. And it's, 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 it's because I said that this information is public and I was a little taken aback that more people didn't react to it. For some reason, my, my other channel is called The Modern Investor, daily cryptocurrency news uh, channels. We've been going strong for like eight years. The most popular news stories are always um, a company's hiring people, a company's firing people. Elon Musk wore a t-shirt. You think I'm joking. That's always at some point ends up being popular news. Uh, Kathy Wood said something. Mike Novogratz stood on stage. What else is popular? It's a lot of other really random stuff, stuff about Shiba Inu, about Dogecoin, you, you name it. Never anything really significant. So upon hearing this news, I was like, we, sh we, sh we should be a lot higher, higher in price. Someone posted this online. I looked around and found a whole bunch of other evidence for it as well. So remember how I told you the nine or 10 companies who have issued the ETFs, they accumulated over 100,000 Bitcoin in two and a half, three weeks, somewhere around there. Just those companies, 100K. The news now is people have looked into the numbers because the, the accumulation is, is, is continuing rapider than it was before. Just BlackRock and Fidelity. Just BlackRock and Fidelity. They now hold over 134,357 Bitcoin. Did you get it? It took nine companies weeks to accumulate over 100,000 Bitcoin. For those of you who don't understand the significance of me saying 100, first of all, it's 100K. I, 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 if, you, if you don't get the significance of that, I can't, I can't really help you with numbers. It's believed that there's just roughly around 1 million Bitcoin that's actually liquid, that can be bought, that can be traded, that's being moved back and forth. It's usually being moved around by day traders, literally people who are trading while the market is open. I know crypto is 24-7, but a lot of those coins, if not all of them from that million and some, are on crypto exchanges. We've gone over before. The idea is that they're not all liquid. Those of you who have your coins on crypto exchanges, are you day trading them or are you holding them? The vast majority of you are going to be like, no, I'm holding them on the exchange as an extra precaution. I Hopefully, you should have your coins here, 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 and then on a crypto exchange as well, like in the other fragments of it as a just-in-case uh, backup kind of situation, which means that that million isn't the actual liquid million. It's probably between 400 and 600,000 Bitcoin that are actually like available for people around the world. So upon hearing that 100,000 Bitcoin had been accumulated out of those 400 to 600,000 pendulum that's swinging back and forth, I was like, well, this is it. This is the moment where, you know, we've all been waiting for and no one, no one paid attention. And I know that some of you pay attention. I, I, I see the comment section. I, I see you telling me that you're paying attention, but you get what I mean. The larger audience is completely everyone's obsessed with Dogecoin. Everyone's obsessed with Solana. Everyone is having fights on Twitter about what Charles Hoskinson said about Ripple and what Cardano did. Again, I'm like, you know, these are distractions, right? You know, you are completely smoking mirrors, not paying attention to the actual massive accumulation that's going on. And then you go, it's this many companies who have accumulated 100K Bitcoin and you smash it down and it's just two companies now. Two com that's, not, that's not counting the other companies. They still exist. They're still accumulating. These two companies, 134,357 Bitcoin in less than a month. These numbers are completely nuts. 
And I just want people, and I mean, when I say people, I want everyone, like every single person collectively to really get it together and understand. I'm trying not to rant. I can feel it bubbling up. Like I, 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 I can feel myself with the words that I'm saying, like getting quite intense. The other news that ties directly into this is the actual amount of interest in this ETF. So we had news about this. Um, I think maybe like a week or so after the actual ETFs were allowed through, we started getting numbers based off of like actual interest and how much money was flowing into these ETFs. So there's a chart here, as always, for those of you who want to read this stuff, the links are in the description below so you can read the stuff. Of the other ETFs that have been started. The last time we had this information, it was on the last 365 days. This is now on the last month or so of ETFs that have been created this year. So think of every single ETF. It, it, it's hundreds. Like it, it, it just it just wasn't those 11 ETFs. Like they're ETFs for every other asset in some sort of way. For the hundreds of other ETFs that got started this year, BlackRock stands in the top 1% of the 1% of the 1% for the amount of inflows and interest in their ETF. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF has greater inflows of money than 99.98%. That's 99.98% of every other ETF that was created this year. Every other asset class is also in there. Gold ETFs, real estate ETFs, this Bitcoin ETF has greater inflows than 99.98 of every other ETF that started this year. We're not even really like halfway through February yet. If those two companies almost have 150,000 Bitcoin, this is what I said in the other video a couple of weeks ago. We are, the way that things are looking now, we are going to get to the point by the time we're in the middle of March, those two companies are probably going to have over 250 to 300,000 Bitcoin. That's not including the other seven, eight companies who were also in there with them in that gigantic pool as well. That doesn't count you or your friends or your family members who were also buying Bitcoin in anticipation of the actual having. What we're seeing right now, this, this sounds a little dramatical, this is going to be written in history books. We're like, we're currently, if you haven't noticed the last like decade or so, uh, we're living through like unprecedented times on nearly every single plateau. When I hear news like this, when I read news like this daily, it does something to my brain where it helps me to really understand the movements of money. It's one thing, so a lot of times we'll have news that, rich person stood on stage and said, I like Bitcoin, I buy it. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's amazing. That also ends up being popular news. For me, it's numbers. I don't care what that one rich person said while standing on stage. I do, however, care if they make an ETF. And that ETF is outperforming 99.98% of every other ETF. When I hear that they and another company are holding, what is that, 30, 20, 25% of all the actual liquid Bitcoin that's out there over the course of a month? That turns my head. This news is insane. Do you understand the significance of this? And even back it up a little bit. Because I, I saw a number of people, it wasn't just here, but people discussing how much liquid Bitcoin that they think might actually be available. How much of a flowing you know, amount is actually available for 8 billion people? 
And I saw other people guesstimating. Their numbers were around, they said maybe maybe it's between 600,000 to 800,000 Bitcoin that's actually liquid. Okay, let's, let, let's do these numbers then. Two companies, four weeks, 135,000 Bitcoin. That would, that would, hmm. July, August? It would take July and August for BlackRock and Fidelity alone to have absorbed that many coins. Do you know what happens to any asset that's that's no longer liquid while the demand has continued to skyrocket? The price also goes completely insane as well. It didn't make a lot of sense to me before. I don't know why I just waggled my finger like that. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we had news from multiple, multiple different sources. It was Kathy Wood. It was Novogratz. It was Samson Mao. It was Michael Jackson. All the other people who are in the news and stuff like that who talk about the, the cryptocurrency prices and more specifically about Bitcoin's price. One of the main things that they kept on saying was that they are all predicting the pendulum swing between a four hundred to a six hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin by next year. And you hear those numbers, and it's like, okay, maybe maybe they're a little crazy. And then you also kind of realize that they're 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 rich enough to be behind the scenes with these people. They know the accumulation that's going on. We 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 sit here from like a speculative corner. Where we can hear and see the numbers in the news, 135,000 Bitcoin accumulated. But we don't know the real conversations as far as like, MicroStrategy is still buying, as is ARK Invest. Like these companies are also buying Bitcoin outside of their ETFs. They're not just buying on behalf of their clients. They're also buying for themselves as well. Imagine you get news that there's a phenomena. There's, there's this new asset out there. There's barely any of it. And your clients really want it. So you procure it for your clients, but none for yourself. That doesn't make a lot of sense. They'd also be buying a huge amount of them as well. This also doesn't play into the other news that we keep getting that there are actively millions of people who are buying Bitcoin who are in the Bitcoin market all the time. Even if they're only buying Satoshis, those Satoshis add up to full Bitcoin. Those full Bitcoin go up the market as everyone anticipates. We've gotten news before, the year 2029 to 2032, half a million to a million dollar Bitcoin as as that pendulum swing back and forth. Yeah, it's a lot of crazy stuff happening at the exact same time. The point of the channel is I want you to really understand what's going on. Because I I was given the impression that years ago when I started this channel and when I also started the other channel, the main one, TMI, The Modern Investor, I felt in a way that I wasn't doing enough. I know that sounds a little bit weird. Like you can give out the information. It's kind of like you can lead a crypto trader to Coinbase, but you can't make them buy. That, that kind of thing. And I saw the prices going up and I saw how many people didn't buy now that i am older and wiser i understand it's just that people really like other crappy coins whatever their life goals might be a lot of people really want shiba inu more than they want the number one coin that's being bought up by all these institutions if we had news that shiba inu cardano and and heaven forbid tron were being bought up by institutions at this rate whole different news story but um yeah here we are so um, I don't know what more to say. I think I've kind of exhausted my my energy with this one. We're going to continue getting news like this. And this is what I think is the most interesting part about this for me is that like this is just the beginning. If the if we had had, if we had had, is that English? ETFs over the course of the last three to four years within the cryptocurrency space. And they had just gotten to 135,000 Bitcoin, just those two companies. Like, okay, cool. The accumulation is happening, happening, you know, slower than expected. What happens by the time we get to the halving? We still have, I, I think it's around 60 or so days, somewhere around there until we get to the halving. The three to four weeks leading up to the halving, you're going to start seeing like the, the buildup go really, really quick because people begin to go, oh my gosh, B Bitcoin's about to half as opposed to having been buying over the course of the last four years. But something really crazy is taking place. 
And I don't know how people have managed to divert or preoccupy so many other people with news that doesn't really matter within the space. It's cool that, like, what was the, there was some other news story, the end of December, maybe beginning of January, it was so popular. It was that someone had taken a computer, put Dogecoin on it, and they put it onto a rocket ship. And I think the rocket ship didn't get to, the camera cuts out sometimes. And then they put it onto the rocket ship, but the rocket ship didn't get to go off. And then now they're trying to redo the launch to literally put Dogecoin on the moon. And I'm like, BlackRock and Fidelity are buying up all the Bitcoin. We still, we still have another 115 years left of mining this coin. Yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, I hope you all enjoy. I hope you all are prepared. I hope you all find time to continue to doing research as well. Dig deep. Dig, dig deep down that well so you can see exactly what's going on because... The rich people are paying attention. I just watched the video. I don't know why I got to this. For some reason, they were talking to like rich people in, in Singapore and in Tokyo and stuff like that. And they were asking these people, what, what are you investing in? What are you, what are you buying? What are you investing in? And the vast majority of them were like, well, I have real estate. I have some stocks, but I'm really into crypto right now. Like I'm buying a lot of crypto. And I was like, hmm. And then like, Every other person kept on saying the exact same thing. And I was like, these are also new people who didn't even fit into my equation before. These, these other people who I didn't even consider around the world were also buying as well, who have like, I don't want to say normal jobs, but making six figures. And they're like, all right, I'll put a couple thousand in every single month. It all adds up. Yeah. I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.